Thank you very much, Hugh. Um, I seem to have reserved a seat on this podium for the past four or five years, but this particular event is probably the most humbling event of the year because I watch with amazement the strength, the courage, and the unconditional support of our families in the face of bereavement of losing their young ones and through immeasurable pain, and for that I'm eternally grateful. I'm also delighted to see the ever-increasing support of our MPs. Without you, this type of campaign would not be possible. The sudden death of any young individual is very tragic and is magnified by the fact that the vast majority of conditions that cause sudden death in young people can be diagnosed during life, and for which there are several therapies that can change the natural history of the condition and minimize the risk of sudden death. Most victims that die lose between 50 to 70 years of life. 80% have no symptoms whatsoever and sudden death is the first presentation, suggesting that some form of screening is necessary. In our experience, when we do screen for the first degree relatives of victims of sudden death, we normally identify a condition in another member in around 50% of cases. Many of you that follow the news will realize that the incidence of sudden death and morbidity from cardiac disease is dropping in the United Kingdom, particularly in middle-aged and older people. But if you look at the statistics in young people, we have remained stagnant. We have made no progress in reducing death rates in young people. And that's where CRI's mission comes in. CRI's mission is to prevent young sudden cardiac death. The charity have dedicated tw nearly 20 years screening young, young individuals who look apparently healthy and directing a, a huge amount of energy into rese researching issues relative, er, uh, pertinent to sudden cardiac death. Every year I am party to debates against screening young, apparently healthy individuals. The antagonist argues that we should be using our resources more widely in the elderly individuals who are much more likely to die from heart attacks and heart failure. There are concerns about false positive results, particularly in sporty individuals who have larger hearts and thereby may show signs that may confuse us with cardiac disease. People often point out that screening isn't foolproof and that some people will die irrespective of screening. And that's where our response comes in. CRY has injected over £2 million into research uh, basically investigating issues around sudden death in the young, and this includes the magnitude of the problem, the causes of sudden death, the circumstances around sudden death, and cost-effective methods in preventing such deaths. Some of the pivotal messages that will resonate with some of you is that each, each week there are at least 12 deaths in young individuals, and I would go as far as saying 16 deaths. That's quite different to what the National Screening Committee suggests. The, the vast majority of deaths are due to electrical faults of the heart rather than structural disease, and these can be picked up uh, with the ECG. 40% die at rest, suggesting that we should not be confining this type of screening just to sportsmen. It should be open to all young individuals, irrespective of how much exercise they perform. There is new data from our research fellows that suggest that if we actually screened and we did all the additional tests to actually confirm or refute the diagnosis, that would amount to about £56 per screen. That involves doing all the investigations of these people. In fact, the CRI screening programme has led to 120 publications since I became their cardiologist. That equates to around eight publications a year, and Oxford and Cambridge would give their right arm for that sort of publication record. Our fabulous fellows, uh, a tremendous team, have won prizes at major organisations at the European Society of Cardiology, Europrevent, and recently at the American Heart Association. There is, of course, the question about infrastructure and expertise. If we can do this, have we got the infrastructure? And again, Cry's answer to that is that they have been training and educating young cardiologists. I have had 21 young cardiologists go through our training process, and each year, two of those leave us to go to Pastors New, 
and have the potential of creating similar uh, cry-related um, centres as we have at St George's so that everybody has equal access to this type of support. And that really brings me to uh, my final comment and that is really to pay tribute to a very special and formidable woman who I've known for 19 years. Um, Alison Cox really doesn't require uh, much um, of an announcement or an introduction but her infectious enthusiasm, commitment and passion have been the anchoring lifeline for this charity when it first started and have been the source of progress over the last 15 years. Alison has defied physicians, sporting organisations and politicians and has taken a small charity from the back room of Epsom Downs to a nationwide and internationally recognised platform. She, her energies uh, played an important role in changing health policy and in the development of the eighth chapter of the National Service Framework, which was commit, dedicated to preventing young sudden cardiac death. In fact, there is only one person who doesn't understand the word no, I don't think so, or I don't know, or maybe we can't. In fact, uh, Alison convinced me that I was fit enough and qualified enough to treat an orangutan in 1995 in Jersey Zoo. How I pulled that off, I don't know. But I guess her belief in me has made me believe that everything that we aspired to and we hope for and we have surpassed in our quest in preventing sudden cardiac death is now a true reality and it is going to happen. We are achieving goals and we are striving for the highest level of success. I want to finish, because our sporting minister was here, to say that you may realise that the English Institute of Sport, Rugby Union, Rugby League and the Lawn Tennis Association feed into the Cry Sport Cardiology Centre. If we're good enough for elite sport, we're good enough for all young people. That's a message for everyone out there. I'd like to leave you by saying thank you very much. Thank you very much for the unconditional support from our families, our friends and our politicians and I wish you a very pleasant evening. Thank you.